Okay, so you can't talk about the world and what's going on without talking about oil and gas, which is why Keith Schaefer is with us right now, editor, publisher of Oil and Gas Investments Bulletin. Anybody in the business is reading it these days, and it's, it's, the website is oilandgas-investments.com. Um, Keith, thanks so much for being with us right now. You know, I, I drive a lot, and I know that gas prices are going up. And this, the rotten part about gas prices going up is even if oil pulls back, we feel like it never comes back down. It's true. It, it, Tracy, what, what's happening now, though, is that the Americans and all the North Americans, actually, the Canadians and the Americans, are actually getting still getting a discount to world prices. What we're seeing here is that because of all the oil out of North Dakota that's hitting, coming down to Oklahoma, you're seeing American oil prices be about $20 a barrel less than everywhere else in the world. So even though it feels like we're getting pinched all the time, we're actually not getting pinched as hard as everybody else. So we actually have a little bit to be thankful for. And that's probably going to continue, I think, for the next few months. I don't know if that's much consolation to those of us out there driving all day long, right? So let me ask you this. Are you concerned about the administration's policies and what's going to ha or what's not happening? I mean, because if we don't drill here at home, we don't put necessary pipelines in, um, we're still relying on foreign oil. We are still fairly reliant on foreign oil, that's true. However, what would happen right now is if we did get that Keystone pipeline or any other pipeline uh, to take all that oil out of Oklahoma back to the coast, what would happen is that all of America's oil prices would rise $20 a barrel very, very quickly and increase prices at the pump even more. So I keep thinking, sure, economically that might make sense for the producers, but I think what the Obama administration is looking at is, hey, if I do that, I'm going to increase gas prices in one-third to one-half the country by 10, 20 cents a gallon. And how politically popular is that going to make me? Huh. So then, so then what's the answer? In your mind, what's the answer to keep oil prices down? Well, uh, the Americans are definitely doing their part because our, despite the, the good recovery that we're starting to see in the economy bit by bit, our oil usage is actually down 4%. And over, year over year. And of course, last year wasn't a great year either. So despite all the good things happening in the economy, we're using less oil. So we're doing our part, but Asia has a different mindset. They're still industrializing. You're seeing a very steady, slow tsunami of demand building. And I don't know what we can do to stop that. We're using less, although we're still buying gas guzzlers, right? Trucks are still the number one car being sold. Um, so we, we still aren't at a point where we're, you know, we're screaming for the hybrid or the electric vehicle. We still, we still need it. It's not going away, is it? No, no, I, I don't see anything replacing oil for a very long time. Though now we are starting to see some natural gas fleets on the commercial side really start to pick up steam. I'm, I'm seeing more and more press releases of companies who are turning from uh, oil, gas to uh, natural gas. And that uh, there, there's different stocks, companies that are, are helping with that, and they're all doing well. So that process is starting, but it's slow. That You're talking about a, a trillion dollar change in infrastructure across the United States. That's not going to happen overnight. Okay, now this I find really interesting, and I've st I'm starting to hear more and more about this. You say investors should pay close attention to water. Why? Well, right now, with the oil boom and the gas boom that we're seeing across the United States, is one of the major components of that boom is the huge amounts of water that need to get used in each well, up to four, six million gallons of fresh water per well. And so there is now huge pressure on the industry to source that water properly, dispose of it properly, treat it, and if possible, recycle it. So now you're seeing this huge multi-billion dollar industry form right in front of our eyes on how to deal with all that water infrastructure. You're seeing new water pipelines get built. You're seeing new technologies get commercialized. Uh, the trucking industry is, is going crazy across uh, the Marcellus in the northeastern U.S. and in North Dakota, just trucking water back and forth. So you're going to see, I think, a huge increase in the amount of money and, I think, shareholder profits get created with, over water in the next few years. It, it, it's interesting. I'm starting, like I said, I'm starting to hear more and more about this. Now, the, our infrastructure for water is so antiquated, isn't it? So we need to rebuild our interior infrastructure, infrastructure, I should say. Otherwise, we could be talking about water shortages in a couple of years, can't we? Well, you're already seeing that in Texas, and you know you have an environmental problem, and the Texans are, are upset about it. And really what's happening here is you've got a, a big drought there, and you're seeing truck after truck go by your road 
with water going to a well. And that's a bit disconcerting when you're – we're talking about billions, tens of billions of gallons of fresh water in Texas alone. Are there companies in particular that you think people should be watching right now? Well, there's, there's a lot of companies that are starting to, to get market share in this space. And, and really, I think the big risk here is that nobody really knows where this industry is going right now. The, the companies that I'm following would be Heckman, HEK, and the New York Stock Exchange. They trade around $5. They're on a, a fairly high growth curve, but on a valuation basis, they're pretty rich. Uh, a couple of juniors in the space, Green Hunter, uh, founded by Mark Evans, founder of uh, Magnum Hunter Oil. Mm -hmm. So those two stocks are, are ones that I kind of have on the radar screen. But really, it's, it's just a case of trying to figure out where everything is going to shake out. The, the big companies are also starting to get involved in this, so uh, we have to be very careful. All the, the water hasn't flowed to where it has to go yet, if you could say. Right, right, right. It's, it's interesting, though, something for people to keep an eye on. And finally, before I let you go, God willing, it warms up around here soon. we got summer coming. You're going to see that spread between the WTI and the Brent, which is the West Texas, West Texas uh, oil versus the Brent, right, Brent out of London. You're going to see that spread get closer and closer, aren't you? I, I think as we get closer to driving season, yes, you'll see that get closer, but probably not for another month or okay. two or even three. So, Americans, we need to enjoy this, this little respite in world oil prices while we've got it, because I think as we get closer to the summer driving season, yes, our, our oil price is going to move up. And then what? We see $4 gas again. That's a very good chance, absolutely. Man, oh, man. This was great. Keith Schaefer, you're awesome. Editor, publisher of Oil and Gas Investments Bulletin. Again, the website is oilandgas-investments.com. You could also follow Keith at Oil and Gas Invest. Keith, please come back. This was terrific. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you.